I have no idea why women defend this. Do you understand that men becoming a trans athlete and competing in your female division is worse for you? This is worse for women. Women are very quick to talk about the patriarchy and talk about how men rule the world and about how it's a man's world and how there's only male CEOs. Then when men come over to your division in your sport and absolutely dominate you, you want to defend it? I understand my video the other day may have come across as a little bit insensitive. Okay, I was just being a bit provocative and stuff like that. The whole Laurel Hubbard situation. Look, she's converted into a, a female. That's completely fine. If I was to see her in person, I would call her by her preferred pronouns, which is obviously she and her. That's fine. I don't mind. That's all cool. Nothing against people who are trans, male or female. Doesn't matter. Doesn't bother me. Make your own choice. We live in a free world. But anyway... I want to really double down on this topic. And I've got a little bit more evidence to show people who don't seem to be convinced that being a man affords you certain advantages when it comes to sports, especially those that are physical, which is all sports really, what am I on about? But it seems like some people still don't want to believe that men have more advantages than women when it comes to sports. So I come across this interview of a former Olympic weightlifter. Her name is Tracy. I can't pronounce her second name. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. But it's only a short clip. But let's listen what she has to say about trans men competing in the female division. I'm quite disappointed. I'm quite disappointed for the female athlete who will lose out on that spot. We're all about equality um, for women in sport. But right now that equality has been taken away from us. Weightlifters come up to me and say like, what do we do? Like, this isn't fair, How, what, what can we do? And uh, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do because every time we try to voice it, we get told to be quiet. So there you go, you're getting former Olympic weightlifters being told, shh, don't say anything because you've got trans women competing in your division. I honestly believe the people who give pushback about this have got no background in sports or weightlifting or training or working out. It seems like the majority of people who give pushback don't truly understand the physical differences between men and women. And those physical differences are not going to disappear after a year of living as a trans woman and getting hormone blockers to suppress your testosterone. Now, if you don't believe that, check this out. Check out this clip from Coach Greg Duchette. He's a professional bodybuilder, professional powerlifter. Coach Greg got his testosterone levels checked. And what he discovered by the Olympic Weightlifting Federation testosterone standards, he would actually be able to compete as a female in the female division by his test levels. Now, this is a professional bodybuilder and a professional powerlifter who I'm guessing is around 40 ish years old trained his entire life as a man he would actually be allowed to compete in the female division eat with women well to make it fair the ioc implemented a rule that females must have their testosterone levels below 10 nanomoles per liter but does that make it fair of course not i recently had my blood work done i was at 14.4 nanomoles per liter and before that when i wasn't on hrt i was between three and four that means Coach Greg, if I chose to identify as female, could literally compete in the Olympics as a female. Does that sound fair? No, it definitely isn't fair. So when Coach Greg wasn't on his hormone replacement therapy, he could have actually competed as a female if he identified as such. That's crazy. There is probably men out there right now with low testosterone levels who would actually still be able to compete with females despite having all these other advantages. I'm not going to go through all the advantages that men have physically over women. Again, go and check my previous video for that. Now, for the triggered women out there who are thinking, Sean, you don't understand. You're just a man. Toxic masculine. You called Laurel Hubbard he in the last video. You're insensitive, blah, 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 blah. Here we have Caitlyn Jenner agreeing with me. Check this out. Reporter trying to bait Caitlyn there. Listen, Caitlyn competed as a man her entire life in the Olympics. It could be very easy for Caitlyn to just agree with it all and say, yes, trans athletes should be allowed to compete with women. But no, she understands it's unfair for biological men, biological boys to grow up, train their entire life and then just switch over and compete with the women. It's unfair. Now, when you hear someone like Caitlyn Jenner say something like this, you think, fair enough. I respect Caitlyn's opinion. She's obviously educated on the matter. She's both been in the Olympics and has transitioned to female. So she's coming at it from a very educated perspective. Next, you've got the likes of these stupid feminists like this Sarah Silverman disagreeing with Caitlyn. Like Sarah is more educated on the matter. A Caitlyn Jenner saying trans girls uh, should not play girls' sports. Caitlin, you're a woman, right? 
A trans girl is a girl. She should have the same rights as cis girls. If you think a trans girl, what, you think trans that trans girl. girl is too strong? I, <laughs> what about... Yeah, a trans girl is too strong. Tall girls, as opposed to short girls. What about a boys in high school who are teeny tiny and their teammates uh, have already hit puberty and are shaving? I know what she's trying to say here. Tall girls, they have bigger advantages than small girls. What about small boys? They have less advantages than tall boys. Do we start segmenting it like that? Stupid arguments. Let's look at the women's NBA, for example. The WNBA. In the entire female roster of WNBA players, only two or three women can dunk the ball, despite being six foot and upwards. Now, throughout the history of the NBA, throughout the entire history of the NBA, you've got men who can still dunk the ball. You put male and female against each other in a physical manner. 99.9% .9 of the time, the man will win. She hasn't got a clue what she's talking about. Get it off the screen. But now look, this is what it's come to. This is years ago. I was speaking about this in the comments of my last video. Now you've got transgender MMA fighters. Men transitioning into women. And then going and fighting women. This is what your progressive world is creating. Men transitioning into women and going and breaking schools. This transgender MMA fighter, Fallon Fox, I'm sure, I think she actually broke the other girl's skull. So let's watch it. Oh, wow, Erica Newsom throws. Goes for the takedown. Fallon Fox has escaped. They're both back up on their feet. Good throws and reversals by both fighters. These girls are getting right into it. Fox Boom. Oh, and and that's it. Fallen, fuck. There's your equality. That's not nice to watch. That's a man straight up kneeing a woman in the head. Oh, so she's a female. All right. When it boils down to this, you can throw all that offensive crap out the window. It doesn't matter. I'm happy to use someone's pronouns. I'm happy to call someone by their preferred pronouns. But when it boils down to this type of shit... It's not fair, is it? All that pronoun nonsense can go out the window. Stop getting offended. How do you think this girl felt when she got kneed in the head by someone who's lived the life as a biological male? Now it's taking a few hormone blockers. Sounds get in the ring. Eesh. You've now also got transgender boys competing in track and field against girls. We've got these two boys here who are doing, I think it's 100 meters and competing against biological females and coming first and second. Terry Miller and Andrea Yearwood smoked the competition at last week's state championships for track and field. When you look at the competitions and they turn into a complete blowout, you realize that something is different. Miller and Yearwood are both transgender. Born boys, they raced against the girls. Selena Sewell competed with them and says it's an unfair advantage. I have no problem with them being a girl and wanting to be a girl. My issue is with CAC. The CIAC says their policy follows state law. Teens can compete for the team they gender identify with. Uh, this is ridiculous. So can I just say, do I identify as a female? Destroy some women on the track. It's not fair. High school runner Selena Soul joins us. You know, big up this girl. She's actually speaking out against it. This girl is actually friends of the two transgender boys who she's racing against. But she just wants to speak out and say that it's not fair for the biological girls. Now, Selena, thanks for being with us. Of course, thank you for having me. You're welcome. So you're friends with these two individuals and you're proud of them, you say, for uh, wanting to be themselves and true to themselves, but you have a problem with them running um, in the female matches? Yes, it is unfair to have a someone who is a biologically a male run with the girls who have not gone undergone anything in terms of hormone therapy. So what would you what would you like to see the solution? I know there's seven states that say they do have restrictions for this. Transgender athletes, they have to compete under their birth gender. Is that what you think would be fair? I don't think that would be fair because I them would to be compete. discriminating against them. Okay, so what would be fair to you? E to, I would think it would be fair is to either implement the same policy that the NCAA and the International Olympic Committee have or have them run as an exhibition type event. Yeah, so it still won't be fair even if they implement what the Olympic Committee is, is doing right now. The most fair way to deal with this is just to have separate divisions, is to have a trans division, so a trans female and a trans male division. Look at the Paralympics and then all the different categories within the Paralympics that they have. So they'll have an event and then they have different levels of disabilities all grouped together with each other. So it's actually fair because you might have someone who just has a mild disability competing against someone who's 
maybe got no leg and half an arm. Even the Paralympics get it right. They group people together in the proper manner. That is more inclusive. That doesn't push people out. That brings more people in because it's fair. That's what should happen here. You've got male divisions, female divisions. You should also have trans divisions. I don't see why it's a problem to just have a trans division. But we know why there's not a trans division. Because it's making something out of it. It's bringing light to the fact that, oh, these are trans people. Whereas I understand the trans people just want to integrate within their selected gender. I completely understand that. But it's just not fair for everyone else. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this as well, but... There's a transgender, this video is called Transgender Dude Dominating Women's Handball Championships. <laughs> Have you ever seen Dodgeball? Where they go against the, the girls and then you've got the, the one with the muzzy and all that who's clearly on the steroids. That's what this reminds me of. Check this out. Oh, mad, isn't it? Let me know down below if you still disagree, like some people do. Do whatever you want with your balls. Do whatever you want with your vagina. It doesn't bother me. When you start mixing everyone together like this, it just isn't fair across the board. Make sure you subscribe with notifications turned on. Like the video. Give me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this, if you agree or disagree. What solutions could possibly be made? And I'll see you next Thursday.